One of the most common questions that I receive from new subscribers to F64 Academy is, Blake, I see a lot of this luminosity masking stuff and you talk about this blend if stuff, which one is the better way to blend layers in Photoshop? And in reality, they both have their place. Luminosity masks are powerful for what they do, but my personal opinion is that blend if is the absolute best way to blend layers because there's a lot more capability with blend if than there is with luminosity masks, traditional pixel luminosity masks in Photoshop. But it does come with its own faults. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna briefly cover why I like blend if so much but then I'm gonna tell you all the bad things I don't like about it. Okay, so let's jump in here. I've got this shot of this church and what you can see in my workflow is, I'm gonna go and delete this layer. As you look at all of the layers in my layers palette here, every single layer that you see here with the exception of maybe one and then a couple that are in this group, all have something called blend if in them. This identifies that blend if is being used. I love blend if, <laughs> I use it all the time. You can see, I use it all the time in the workflow for this image, used it a ton. Let's say that in this image, in the highlight areas, I want this to have a little bit more warmth to basically counteract the blue that's happening on the left and right hand side of the image. Kind of give us some color theory here. What I'll do is I'll add a solid color to this image. And this solid color, I'm gonna pick something that's in this warm orangish yellow range here. I'll probably go right here. I don't even know what this is gonna look like right now. So let's just pick something that's right in between. I'll press okay. Now I'll change that to the soft light blend mode because that's typically the blend mode that I used most for this. Now, if I want this to only be in the highlight areas, I could try to make a luminosity mask for those highlights, but I want something a little bit more versatile. So that's where I'll use blend if. If I double click here, I actually get into the blend if layer styles here. It's actually in the layer styles. That's where blend if is. Okay, so if I only want this to affect the highlights of everything that's below this, I basically then need to protect the darkest areas that's underneath this layer from being affected. So as I move this, it's basically going to apply that nice warm glow to only the highlight areas into my mid-tone areas. Then I'll press Alt or Option to get a nice little split and feather here so it feathers its way on out. Now, it's hard to see exactly what this is applying itself to, so I routinely tell people to click on the color overlay here and make sure that this color overlay is set to the color magenta, okay? And we'll press OK. So that's exactly where this blend diff is gonna be affecting our image. And if we want to, we can even use this as we use our blend diff here to make sure it really only specifically goes in those areas. And then we'll press okay. Now I can turn this color overlay on and off and you can see here that we've got this nice vibrant kind of glowing light that counteracts the darker blue on the left and right hand side. Now I can double click this at any time because it's a solid color fill and I can change this to any color I want. Now the really beautiful part about this is because it's not a pixel mask, you'll see there's no pixels right here. I can actually copy this. I can press control C on this color fill and go to any other image that I have in Photoshop and I can drop it on top of it. So for instance, this portrait image that we see here, I can press control V because I just copied it from one to the other. And this blend if is now on this image too, which is brightening her up. Now, I would say that maybe with this, we probably would go with a different color here. We can make it look like sunset, get that nice warm light that's there. Maybe even go a little bit warmer or a little bit more red with it to be uh, nice with her skin tones there. And if we want to see what this is affecting, look. So this is affecting the exact same thing that's being affected in this image, but it's not the same mask. If you were to use a luminosity mask to do this, then you would be stuck with these pixels as being the area that that color fill is going into. Whereas now we can just pick this thing up and we can move it to any image we want. And because it's using the pixel data to say, hey, protect the underlying layers, shadow areas, the shadow areas in this image are in that specific space that we chose that, that we're not seeing here in the magenta area. So as I move this, you can see that we can dial this in a little bit further if we wanted to and make it even maybe a, a more even spread. Turning that color overlay off, it looks like we did a pretty darn good job with that by giving it a nice amber glow of light. So that's the benefit of blend if. It's phenomenal in that you can port it over from one image to the next. The settings that you use on one can be ported to another image. It's extremely versatile and you can actually even make profiles for Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom this way using Blend If where you couldn't do that with a luminosity mask. Now let's talk about the problems with Blend If. I usually just try to sell you on this without telling you all the bad stuff about it. So let's do, let's go over this. What is bad about Blend If? Well, first and foremost, we don't have blend if anywhere in our normal editing pane. Nowhere in here do we have something that says, this is where blend if is used. The only way that you can do this, and this is the second thing that I don't like, the only way that you can do this is by double clicking in here, 
opening up the layer styles, the bigger your image gets, the slower it gets. This is a very large PSB file, so it takes longer for this to open. Every time I need to make a modification to the blend diff for this image, I need to double click that layer and go into it. And guess what? I'm going to forget to do that. So that's two things. I don't like that we can't use it in the editing pane. I don't like that we have to double click to, to modify it or edit it. The third thing I really don't like about Blendif is that most people don't even use one of the most powerful aspects of Blendif, and that's actually in the color Blendif area, because all we think to ourselves is, okay, Blendif gray. But then when we go in here, we actually have access to red, green, and blue. So when we do this, if we wanted to make sure that the blues don't get affected in this image, we would have to pull this over. So we're basically blending our uh, Blendif blue with our Blendif gray. Now, this is where things get confusing and people are like, wait a second, there's too many blend if sliders here. I'm just not even going to bother going into blend if color. But it is an extremely powerful way to blend the color in better to your image because you can specifically say, don't affect the dark areas of the underlying image, but also while you're doing that, don't affect the blue areas of the underlying image. But because it's very difficult to see, we just often forget about it completely. Well, after nearly a decade of working with Blend If in Photoshop, I've come up with a solution to all of those problems. I teamed up with a buddy of mine, Tony G, and we created the Blend If plugin for Photoshop. This Blend If plugin is beautiful because it fits really well right here in this space. And we designed it specifically so that it would only take up about the space of maybe the curves adjustment layer or an HSL adjustment layer. And what you can see right off the bat here is that we have Blend If at our fingertips right here inside of Photoshop, and we can move these sliders just as we would inside Blend If. And if we double click this layer to see this, we can see exactly that this slider right here corresponds directly to the Blend If gray settings that are inside Blend If. So as we move these, it is adjusting the Blend If. We have Blend If inside the editing pane of Photoshop. That's the first problem that I wanted to solve. It also solves that second problem of not being able to go into Blend If very easily because we have to double click it. Well, it's right here and it's accessible right in front of us. And I talked about Blend If for color and that being an issue. Well, guess what? We have color Blend If right here. So let me show you in practice here just how easy it would be to apply these settings to this image. I'm gonna reset the tones here and I'm gonna reset the colors here so that there is no more Blend If happening on here. We have no blend if we can see that because we don't have a circle there. So if I only want this to go in the highlights, I'll check this box. That means that it's only going to the highlight areas and it's automatically done with the click of a button via the blend if panel. Now on the same note, if I didn't want this to affect the blues, I could click this button right here, which will make sure that this only goes on everything but the color blue. So now we've got the exact same blend if on this image that we did before. And we did it with two clicks in this panel instead of having to go into the blend if settings and do it there. In my personal opinion, Blend If is unrivaled, and that's why I've created a course called the Unrivaled Blend If that comes with this panel. As I said before, I use Blend If for everything in my workflow. You'll see that it's in almost every single layer on every major image that I've edited, and I use it for a lot of things. So that's why in this course, I not only show you how to install this panel, how to use this panel, I also show you all the things that I use it for. And I'm talking luminosity masks, noise reduction, sharpening, sky replacements, color grading, texture blending, dodging and burning, vignettes, portraits, Adobe Camera Raw profiles, and those are just the 10 things that I'm showing you in this course. When you finish this course and have access to the panel in your workflow, I can guarantee you'll come up with 10 things that you're gonna use it for in your workflow as well. If you're interested in this panel and the education I have for you, go ahead and click in the description below. There's a link for you there. There'll also be a link up here in this video right here as we close out. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things like Blend If in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.